So a very good day once again, uh, everyone. And uh, uh, today we'll continue from where we stopped in the uh, catch up lecture series. But uh, I'd love to just make a quick recap that in the last lecture, we actually talked about the microprocessor of evolution, that it all begins with the logic gates. And we made mention of two important metrics in terms of design, which is the speed of operation and the energy consumption of these devices. So hence, uh, we want to design to meet it, those specifications. Then uh, we try to look through the designer's uh, perspective, more like uh, a, a hierarchical approach in terms of, of the design process, okay? And that we call the abstraction, okay? The abstraction. So uh, in the abstraction of the uh, computing device, we look through from the highest level where we have the application software sitting on the uh, operating system, where we have the device drivers, then that also sits on the architecture where we have to deal with uh, instructions and instruction sets and registers. And then that also sits on the microarchitecture where we have to now uh, deal with the data part. And then the microarchitecture itself sits on the logic design, okay? And from the logic design perspective, we were able to also uh, uh, mention that there we are able to design the others and the memories. And the others and memories are designed from gate devices, which are the logic or better the digital circuit devices. And now the, 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 the logic devices itself, just like we also showed in the um, series using uh, NAND gates, uh, using uh, yeah, uh, NAND for, to design NAND gates, for instance, or using NAND gates to design some of these uh, integrated circuits. And we saw that even the NAND gates are also made from uh, the uh, CMOS devices, the P-type and the N-type uh, feed effect transistors. So the digital circuit itself now sits on the analog circuits where we have the amplifiers and and, and the likes, and the, ana the, the analog circuit itself now sits on such devices you, that may have been mentioned in your fundamentals of electrical engineering, transistors and, and, what, you, and what have you. And those devices, the optoelectronic devices and the likes uh, are designed from the physical electronic, uh, electronics perspective, where we have to resolve the Schrodinger equation and talk about the motion of electrons in the microscopic dimension. We now have to talk about quantum wells and all of that in terms of fabrication process. But that's fine, that, that just pulls through that. Whatsoever you're actually trying to do from the uh, analytic as uh, perspective, from, from that dimension, we are able to get the discipline, or better still, the discipline to uh, come up with the principles for the design of these uh, devices. So they don't just jump off the hook. And then we also talked about uh, managing the complexities of this design. And then we talked about the, uh, the three whys, right? We talked about hierarchy, modularity, and regularity. Then from there, we went into the digital abstraction where we now have to deal with discrete values, okay? Because what we are trying to deal with are zeros and ones, you know? And then uh, we want to we believe that's what the machine understands. So we're able to move between bases and, and, and all of that. Then we, we mentioned that uh, for us to be able to convert between these uh, number systems, we need some electronic translators where we have the uh, 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 encoders, yeah, yeah, encoders and decoders. Then we also talked about the code conversion system, the binary code, the decimal, gray codes, and the SS3 codes. And we said the uh, uh, yeah, the BCD code, then uh, where we said the, uh, I think the SS3 code is, uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, how do I put it now? Uh, and uh, an enhancement, or better still, it, it, it derives from uh, the BCD code because we just add three, right? Three to it is, so we are still playing with the BCD code which is a weighted code, and but now we in the non-weighted code, which is the, uh, the SS3, we now have to either add three or subtract three, depending on the conversion process. 
Then we have the gray code, which is not a special type of uh, the, the binary, the uh, BCD code, the binary code, the decimal code. And then fine. Then uh, in that catch-up lecture, the last lecture, we also talked about the logic gates. And then we made mention of the true tables and the Boolean equations. And from there, we were able to map out uh, the basic logic gates. And then uh, we made mention of the static discipline. Okay, and uh, we were able to say that it gives uh, uh, such that for any given logical input, there should be uh, a logical, uh, a logically valid output. That's what the static discipline means. So, in terms of coming from the gate system, then we should be able to get valid outputs for valid inputs. Then we made mention of some of the uh, basic uh, logic families. The transistor, transistor logic, the complementary uh, meta oxide semiconductor logic, the CMOS. Then we talked about the low voltage versions of all of these. Then we also tried to explain some of the basic characteristics of um, of the uh, TTL, okay, which is the LS series for uh, uh, gate device designs, and the computing device was once based on that, but because of the low energy consumption of uh, a, a characteristics of the CMOS uh, system, then most of uh, the recent uh, device or computing devices are built from uh, such devices. Well, we're trying to come through from the design perspective and we're able to see how we could use uh, the uh, uh, P-type or N-type uh, uh, MOSFET uh, 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 devices to design very complex integrated circuits, okay? And on and on, how we could add them up. So today, uh, we're going to just uh, play with some of the mathematics, okay? Uh, there are things you already know, but uh, for the purpose of this lecture, okay, let's uh, put this down. For the purpose of this lecture, we're going to uh, probably consider, we just look look through and then uh, see what we can do, okay? Okay, so let's move this, good. So now, uh, let's get the writing tab. I'm sure it should be okay now. You know, in our last online lecture, we could not use our writing tab, but we should be able to use it today. So we're going to play with the bowling algebra. Now, uh, for us to be able to uh, play with, or better to play with the design of uh, the logic uh, gate devices, it is logic, right? We need to play with some true false statements at a high low. The most important thing is that we are dealing with two possibilities, two possible states. So uh, when we talk about logic, we want to deal with two possible states, right? So possible states. And this could either be a true or a false uh, statement. And this also brings us to uh, the binary dimension of looking at these things because in the binary dimension, we have two possible uh, variables, either is zero or one, okay? So if we assume that, or better still, a low or a high, right? So that should we map a system such as this, we could assume this to be a zero state and this is a one state, right? So this would be equivalent to a high and this to a low. So we could say this is a true state and this is a false state. So this brings us uh, this brings us to that uh, logic uh, logic gate dimension, okay? 
And uh, in your previous lecture series, uh, you also have covered all of those concepts in details, okay? But well, for the purpose of covering the curriculum, we just want to look through them again, uh, probably to emphasize a few points, not because we want to look through uh, the uh, analytical aspect or perspective, but we want to see how it applies in terms of design. Okay, that's the that's our point here. So, so we either have a one or a zero or a high or a low, okay? So with this, then we are able to come through with, uh, with the logic gate uh, activities, okay? So, and that is where we are going to take things from now. So because when we talk about bowling algebra, we want to first of all uh, come up with the digital circuit design itself because it's from the digital circuit we can now begin to apply the mathematics of the circuit, which we now call the Boolean algebra. Is that clear? I seem to be talking all alone. So uh, can I get any feedback from you guys right now? Any feedback? Yes, sir, we are following you, sir. Yes, I am following you, sir. So you, I can go on or we yes, should... Okay, okay, that's fine. Now, uh, if that's what it is, we now have to play with digital circuits because uh, from your uh, analog uh, circuit perspective where you uh, played with uh, the long parameter element uh, in your fundamentals of electrical engineering, you came up with diverse problem solving skills or abilities in terms of resolving electrical circuits. And now what we are trying to say is that in the digital dimension, the mathematics for resolving such circuits is the Boolean algebra, okay? And that brings us to the digital circuit itself. So for the digital circuit, we have two basic classifications, okay? So let's write this. Thank you, classification. Okay, so we have the uh, combinational circuit. And uh, the digit, uh, the sequential, right? Sorry, the sequential circuit. Now you already know that this uh, that the combinational circuit is memoryless. Why the sequential circuit has memory? Okay. Now for the uh, combinational circuit, it's a circuit whose output depends only on the current value of the input. Okay. So the output depends only on the current value of the input. Okay, so in other words, it combines the current input values to compute the output, but for the sequential circuit, for it to have memory, it means it will have to also relate with the previous input. So, so it means it's able to hold the value of the previous input. So for the sequential circuit, these are circuit whose output depends on both current and previous values of the input. And you have common examples such as flip-flops, right? So you deal with that in your digital circuits or yeah, digital, uh, yeah, your digital electronics. Okay, now uh, you should know that a circuit is combinational if it consists of interconnected circuit elements 
such that one, it is, uh, let's put it, a circuit is combinational if every circuit element is itself combinational. Every circuit element is itself combinational. And two, every node of the circuit is either designated as an input to the circuit or connects to exactly one output terminal. Okay? So it means that every node And the top point here is that the circuit contains no cyclic parts, okay? Circuit. So it means that every part of the circuit This is each node at most once. Well, we'll look at a few examples, you know. So, well, this is by the side, okay? This is by the side. So let us uh, come back to our Boolean algebra. Then we now come back to uh, a few examples in this regard, which is the mathematics of logic circuits. So uh, the Boolean expression itself deals with variables that are either true or false, which I already mentioned earlier, and are perfect for describing logic circuits. Okay? And now, uh, some important terminologies that would be handy in uh, our study today are in uh, application of this uh, Boolean algebra uh, activities. So we have complement. We're just trying to refresh our memory. So uh, the complement of a variable A is the same as the inverse, right? A is the same as the inverse of A. That is the complement. Then we have literal. Okay. So this is the variable or its complement. Okay, it is simply, it is simply the variable or its complement. So when we say a literal, it could be A, it could be bar A, it could be B, it could be bar B, it could be C, it could be bar C, and so on. Okay, they are all literals. Then, we have 
implicant, the implicant, or better still, product. Okay? So this is the end of one or more literal, right? The, the product, the product, or the product, or and, it's a logical, you know, uh, of one or more literals. So we already know literals are simply the variable. So the implicant is either A, B, it could be A bar B, it could be A bar B bar, and so on, okay? Could even be uh, A, B, C, D bar, okay? So once we come up with the product, then uh, we say that is the implicant or the product. Then another uh, important terminology is the mean term, okay? So this is the product involving all of the inputs to the function, okay? The product involving all of the inputs to the function. So let's assume we have uh, a three variable system. So for a three variable, we have A, B, C. Okay, so when we have the product of all of the um, inputs, then we say this is, this for instance, let's say A, B bar C, is a mean term for a function of the three variables A, B, C, okay? And uh, I will know for the truth table for this, the uh, Total possible combination will be two to the power of n, which is two to the power of three, and that will be eight, right? So we are going to have eight mean terms for a three variable input, okay? Because the mean term is different from the implicant, okay? So you have to take note. Both of them are products, but the implicant is simply the product of one or more literals, okay? But the mean term has to do with the product of all of the input variables. To the, of the function, okay. Now, another interesting terminology to look at for here is the sum, okay? So this is the all of one or more literals, okay? So a literal is just a single variable, or just a variable, it's complement. So the sum itself is the all of one or more literal. And then just like we have the mean term, we also have the max term, okay? So why we talk about the mean term as the product, the mass term is the sum, okay? So this, the mass term is, this is the sum involving all of the inputs to the function, to the function. So know that it's not just the sum, okay? But it is, it is the sum of all the inputs. So for a three variable, once again, we can say the mass term is A plus B bar plus C, as in this example used here. So this is the mass term for a function of the three variables, A, B, C, okay? And uh, one thing to mention here is that in your regular algebra, we have board mass, right? So uh, with, the, with board mass, we know when we have a particular mathematical expression, we have to resolve the bracket first, then up, then division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So for 
uh, Boolean algebra, we have the lines of precedence also, okay? The lines of precedence in solving Boolean expressions. In Boolean algebra. So we have that it's, it moves from not to and and then to all. Okay, so hence not is performed before and while and is performed before all. So when we have A bar B plus B. C, D bar. So we we'll have to, the precedent says that, well, we have to solve a not first before and, okay? Then before all. So, and then we now have to solve the not first before the B, C, D. Then we can now resolve our all. So that's the precedence you follow in trying to solve this uh, Boolean expression. So, uh, well, another interesting thing to note is that Boolean equations may be drawn in a systematic approach, okay? So how do we draw, how do we draw the diagram for our bowling equations, okay? So this can be done in a systematic way, usually referred to as the programmable logic array, okay? The PLA, you must have you must have seen this, okay? The programmable logic array. So uh, in PLA, the inverter, which is the NOT, uh, the NOT gate, uh, the AND gate, and the OR gates are arrayed in a systematic manner, okay? So for instance, let's say we want to consider the sum of product. Uh, let's say we want to consider the sum of product. Say SOM, for instance, of the following expression. Right, sum of products, sum of product SOM. Okay. So, come. In. Sorry, sir. Is it not meant to be SOP? Oh, sorry. It's SOP. Sorry. Uh, thank you for that. Okay. Something is happening here, it's not cleaning, so. Just a minute, please. Okay. I think I just got rid of that now. So let's consider the uh, sum of product SOP. Yeah, that's right. Say Y, then the output is the same as A bar B bar plus B C bar. Okay. Now we said what we want to do is to draw the diagram, or better say, provide the diagrammatic design for this Boolean equation using uh, the programmable logic array. And we know that 
the inverter, the AND gate, and the OR gates are arrayed in a systematic manner. So what do we do? We well, first of all, we know we have how many literals here? We have three literals. And for these three literals, we have complements of the three literals. So meaning we have inverters, right? So we can put up the literals A, B, and C. And then we have the inverters. Okay. We have this inverter here again. Then we have another inverter here. And don't forget the difference between the inverter and the buffer. So this dot here, the circle here is not in the buffer because it returns the, uh, uh, the, the input as the output. Okay. And now uh, we can pull this off right this way. These are all straight lines. Sorry, well, they're supposed to be straight lines, okay? Now, uh, somewhere around the right, right the, to the right, this is to the right of this board, we should have our. And now we have two and gates, right? That's A bar B and B C bar. So we can place our and gates here. We have an and gate here, and we have another and gate here. So this goes off and then this goes off. Now, outside the AND gate, we have one OR gate, adding the two AND gates. So we can place our OR gate here, going off this way. So this is going to give us our output Y. OK. So that's going to give us our output Y. Okay. So now the output of A bar B bar goes into the input port of our OR gate, and then this also goes in here. Okay. So I think let's let's redraw this. So this goes in here. That's to show there's no connection between the first AND gate and the second gate, except for the termination at the OR gate input. Okay, so we've resolved the output side. So now we have we have that here at this point we have A bar, at this point we have B bar, at this point we have C bar, okay? Good. So now A bar goes into the AND gate. So we can take it off from here. Now we can progress this way, progress this way. And then that comes in here. Then B bar also. So we can take it off from here, progress this way. And then that goes in here. So we, don't, we are done with that. But for the second AND gate, so we can take it off from here and then progress this way. Then come this way, come this way. Then we have C bar. So this is C bar at this point. So we can take it from here. So this type of design is what we refer to as the programmable logic array design, okay? So you will observe that in this design, the first point to take note of is that the columns for the input are drawn. These are the columns, right? The columns. for the input are drawn. And then the second point here is that the inverters 
are included in the adjacent columns to provide complementary inputs when necessary. Okay. The inverters, which are the not gates. And a third point here is that the rows of AND gates for each mean term are also drawn, right? The rows, okay? So the row. The rows for AND gates for each. Main term is also drawn. And then we also have that the all gate connected to the main terms is drawn to provide the output, right? Okay, so that's fine. So uh, it is to be noted that Boolean algebra can be used to simplify Boolean equations, okay? So we have something like this. So is this the simplest uh, expression we can get to achieve the same output? So that's the major issue we want to deal with. We want to minimize the number of gates we use. We want to re reduce the propagation delay because we also want to enhance the speed of operation, okay? That's the reason or the essence for minimization. And so we'll talk about a few minimization techniques shortly, the uh, kind of map uh, using Boolean uh, algebra, and then we'll also look at the quinn McCloskey technique, okay? So also know that uh, Boolean algebra is based on a set of axioms and theorems, okay? So uh, in terms of minimization, that's our goal. We want to design high-speed digital circuits, okay? Because we want your computing device or the processor speed to increase. That's the goal. We want, we want to design super computing devices, okay? Now, uh, so uh, just look through the discipline, okay? Now, uh, so the axioms. and theorems for Boolean algebra. Okay. okay. Now, uh, you should understand something that Assumes are unprovable, okay? And so we just assume them to be correct. Those are assumes, okay? But uh, when it comes to theorems, we want to show the possibility, right? So, fine. So uh, the assumes and theorems obeys the principle of duality, okay? Uh, that should be noted at this point. So let us look at the axioms, some of the axioms, okay? So the first is that, or better said, the first axiom states that a Boolean variable A is zero if it is not one, okay? So, uh, the first axiom states that 
a Boolean variable is A, let's say Boolean variable A, if it is it's A, if it is not A bar, but let's just designate it properly. Uh, let's say it is a Boolean algebra. Let us designate it with some parameter. A Boolean variable A is zero. If it is, if it's, oh no, if it is, let's, let's just write, if it is not one. So that is, in this case, A is equal to zero. If and only if A is not equal to one, okay? And don't forget we already said that both the axioms and theorems obeys the principle they obey, obeys the principle of duality, okay? So if that is true, then, and by, and by duality, The Boolean variable A is the same as one, if and only if A is not the same as zero, okay? And now the second axiom, which forms the basis for logic circuit design states, states that the complement of zero is one. So that is the complement of zero is the same as one. And by duality, by duality, the complement of one is the same as zero. So uh, this uh, second axiom is usually referred to as the not operation, not operation, or better still, the inverter operation, okay? So let's go to the next axiom. Now the third axiom states that the product of zero is the same as zero, okay? Uh, the third axiom states that the product of zero is zero. That is zero dot zero is the same as zero. This is the AND operation actually, right? This is the AND operation. And by duality, by duality, the same theorem states that the sum of ones is the same as one, is the same as one. So that is one plus one is the same as one, such that A plus A is the same as A. So this is the O operation, okay? That is the third axiom. And then we have the fourth axiom. Don't forget where we just hold this Asiums to be true. <laughs> we don't. We don't want to prove them. They are unprovable. Okay, that's why they are asiums. Okay, they are not theorems. They are asiums, and we could use these asiums to validate our theorems. Okay, now the fourth asium states that the product of ones is the same as one. Okay, now the fourth asium says that. 
the product of ones is the same as one. Okay? So that is one dot one is the same as one. This is what we call the AND operation also. And by duality, by duality, the sum of zeros is the same as zero. It states that the sum of zeros is the same. Oh, goodness. Says that the sum says that the sum. Okay, I just switch the pen. Says that the sum of zeros is the same as zero. Okay, that is zero plus zero is the same as zero. Now this is the all operation. Okay. Okay. So still on the ASIOM, still on the ASIOMs, we have the fifth. So the fifth ASIOM states that the product of zero and one is zero. Uh, fifth ASIOM states that the product of zero and one is the same as zero, okay? So that is one dot zero is the same as zero, okay? So this equally uh, and is the same as zero dot one is the same as zero, right? So this is the same as and operation. And by duality, by duality, the sum of zero and one is the same as one, which is one plus zero is the same as zero plus one is the same as one. This is our operation. So uh, these five axioms uh, are very, very uh, important, you know, in uh, resolving our Boolean algebra. Okay. Okay. So let us look at a few theorems. Theorems. So. Let's say T or M1, T1, okay? Is the identity law. In the identity law, A dot one is the same as A. And by, by duality, A plus zero is the same as A. And theorem two is the null element law, okay? The null element law, such that A dot zero is the same as zero, it is a null, okay? And by duality, A plus one, is the same as one, which you want, you may want to say unit law, right? Okay, which is the duality of a null element law. So the duality of a null element law is a unit or unity element law, okay, that's fine. So we have the theorem three, which is uh, idempotency law, and it gives us that A dot A is the same as A, okay? And by duality, by duality, A plus A is the same as A. Mm -hmm. And then we have 
the fourth theorem, which is the involution law. Okay, yeah, sorry for that, okay. Now for the uh, involution law, we have A bar, the uh, complement of the complement of a variable is the same as that variable, okay? And then for the fifth theorem, we have the complement law. We say that, or better say, where we have a dot a bar is the same as zero, and we can prove this. That is one dot zero is the same as zero, right? And by duality, we have a plus a, or a or a is the same as one. So we also have the theorem of several variables, okay? So let us quickly look at that theorem of several variables. So we have the commutativity law, where we have a dot B is the same as B dot A. And by duality, we have A plus B is the same as B plus A. Then we have associativity, right? Associativity law, where we have A dot B dot C is the same as a dot b dot c, right? And by duality, we have a plus b plus c is the same as a plus b plus c, okay? Then we also have, uh, for the theorem of several variables, we also have the distributivity law, distributivity law, where we have A dot B plus C, for instance, is the same as A dot B plus A dot C. And then we can say A dot B, for instance, plus A dot C, is the same as a dot b plus c. And by duality, we have a plus b dot a dot c is the same as a plus b dot dot c, sorry, dot c. And then we also have the covering law. This is covering. covering law. And there we have A dot A plus B is the same as A. And by duality, we have A plus A dot B is the same as A. Then we also have combining law. Combining law. Where we have A dot B plus. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Under the distributivity, the distributivity law, the by duality. Sorry, sir. Is it not meant to be A or B and A or C? The, the third equation, sir, on the screen. For... By duality of the distributivity law. This is... Dot... And A and... Plus. Yes. No, this is... Is it yeah. meant to be A? Yeah, yes. this is all. Yes. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I must have said all and and written product. Yeah, sorry for that. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And then for the combining law, we have a dot b plus a dot b bar. Is b bar right? Let me just uh, let's take this back one. A dot B bar is the same as A. And for the covering law, by duality, we have A plus B dot A plus B bar is the same as A. Then we also have consensus law. Consensus law such that a dot b plus a bar dot c plus b dot c is the same as a dot b bar plus a bar dot c. And by duality, we have a plus b dot a bar plus B, plus C, sorry, plus C dot B plus C will give us A plus B dot A bar plus C. Okay. I don't know if this is clear so far. Well, it's a recap of what you already know, okay? Now, we also have a few theorems. Uh, the Morgan's theorem. Theorems, rather. There are two, two versions to this. Now, the Morgan's first theorem says that the complement of a product is the sum, or is the same rather, as the sum of complements. That is, by A dot B dot C dot D will give us by A plus by B plus by C plus by D. Mm -hmm. And the Morgan second theorem says that the complement of is sum is the same and this product and this sum is the same as the product of the complements. That is A plus B plus C plus D all bar is the same as A bar dot B bar dot C bar dot D bar. Now you must note that the Morgan's theorem are very, or theorems rather, are very useful in digital designs, okay? So let us look at a few examples, just simple examples, in terms of circuit minimization or minimizations using Boolean algebra. That is, when we talk about using Boolean algebra, we talk in terms of using the axioms and the theorems of Boolean algebra. So let's assume we have something like this, where the output is the same as the mean term of A dot B, and then the plus the mean term of A dot B bar. 
So the first thing we want to do here is to factorize. So by factorization, what do we get? By factorization, we have that A is common. So Y is the same as A in the bracket B plus B bar. We just represented the same thing, right? And recall by, uh, by complementary law, law, we have that A plus A bar is the same as one. So here we have Y is the same as A into bracket one, right? Okay, so. Um, okay, so. If that is what we have, so this is going to be the same as a dot one, right? And by identity law, if you recall, identity by identity law, we have that a dot one is the same as a. So technically, in this case, y is the same as a. Okay. So rather than use two AND gates and, uh, and uh, so in other words, here we have A, B, okay? So we have inverters here, right? Using TLA, so we have two AND gates. So here we have a, this, and then here, well, we can take from here, A and B bar. Then here we have the all gates, oh, sorry. Mm, let's go back. The all gate here. So this is why. So this is what we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five gate devices. While here, we can just pass A through a buffer. A here, and then we have Y. So you see, the propagation delay here will be less than the propagation delay in this circuit, while we achieve the same thing, okay? That's from the design perspective. So you may come up with this complicated circuit in trying to design your computing device where you have the NOT gate, the AND gates, and the OR gate. While in my own design, I just I simply use a buffer and feed in the input A. The important, the most important thing is that we'll achieve the same result. Okay. Only that my system may be faster. Okay. Hmm. Now let us consider. Another example before we go into minimization techniques. So let's assume we have Y is the same as A bar dot B plus A bar dot B bar plus A dot B, okay? So here uh, by factorization, so Y is the same as A bar, this is common, uh, B plus B bar, plus a dot b, right? So recall, we evoke the law by complements law. We have a plus a bar is the same as one. So b plus b bar will be the same as one. So y here is the same as a bar dot one plus a dot b, okay? Now, uh, by identity law, identity law, we have a bar dot one is the same as a bar. So y is the same as a bar plus a b. Now, uh, by the fourth axiom, by the fourth axiom, we have one dot one is the same as one, okay? Such that a dot b is the same as A or is the same as B, okay? So hence, hence Y is the same as A bar plus B, okay? So that's the way uh, you, you get to play with um, 
uh, the axioms and the theorems for uh, uh, Boolean expression minimization. But that's not the only technique we have. We also have the kind of map, okay? And now we're going to look through the kind of map for two variables, three variables, four variables, and five variables. Then if we still have some good time in our hands, then we'll play with the Quinn Markowski minimization technique, okay? And then uh, we could go on to some other business in our next class, okay? Now, okay. Now let us look at kind of map. Conventionally, you call it K maps, right? Okay. Now, uh, K map is a graphical technique used for representing the truth table of a particular logic expression in view of simplifying the Boolean expression. So, we already explained that in terms of analyzing systems using logic gates, we could put them either in truth table format or, or better say, our gate devices could be represented in terms of the Boolean expression or the truth table. Okay, and this time we are saying that the K-map is a graphical technique used for representing the truth table of a particular logic expression in view of simplifying the Boolean expression. So this graphical approach is based on Boolean theorems, okay? So you must take note of that, okay? So K-map is a graphical approach, right? It's a graphical approach for minimization. Minimization, okay, and it is also based on the Boolean theorems, okay, Boolean theorems, and axioms, okay, and axioms. So uh, the map is usually rectangular in shape, and the rectangular shape is usually divided into a number of squares, okay. So one, the map. Is usually rectangular. Shape. And then the rectangular shape is usually divided into a number of squares, right? Now, where, where the number of squares is the same as the number of lines in the truth table, okay? So it follows directly from the truth table. And recall, you have to recall here that the number of lines in the truth table is the same as two to the power of n, where n is the same as the number of inputs or variables, okay? So I mentioned it earlier. So if we have two input variables, that'll be two to the power of four. So we are gonna have four lines in the truth table and that's gonna give us four, uh, uh, which would be equivalent to the number of squares as well. So uh, when we talk about K-map method, uh, so let's clear this. So we're gonna talk about types of K-maps, okay? So we're going to talk about the two variable K map. Then we'll talk about the three variables K map. We'll also talk about the four variables K map. And then we'll also talk about the five variables. 
K-maps. Okay, K -maps. okay. So let's let's begin with uh, the two variable K-map. Okay, so we have two variable K-map. So for a two input or two variable true table, so when we have two input or variable, uh, the true table, uh, so we have two to the power of n, two to the power of two, which is four number of lines, right? So for the true table, let's say TT, so we have, let's assume we have AB as our input, then we have Y as our output. So since we have four possibilities, so we have zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, right? So here in the output, we mean it means that we have zero, 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 which is the same as A bar, B bar, okay? Then we have zero, one here in the output, where we have, these are the mean terms, where we have A bar, B, then here we have one, zero in the output, where we have A, B bar, and then here we have one, one, where we have A, B, okay? So this is the true table. And now it means that we have one, two, three, four lines. So we are going to have four squares, four possibilities here. So we are going to have four squares, okay? So if we have A, A bar here, then we are going to have B, B bar here. So we can now translate this. So at this point, we have A, B, right? Here we have A, B. So this box implies one, one, okay? Here we have A bar, B, right? A bar, B. So A bar, B, that is zero, one. So in this box, we have A, B bar, B bar. So that is one, zero. And here we have A bar, B bar, A, A bar, B bar. That is zero, zero. So we can also, this is the K map. So we can also represent this in this format where we say this is A and this is B. And then, so it means this part of it is A, this part of it is B where this is one and this is zero, and this is one and this is zero. So this will be one, one, then this will be zero, one, then this will be one, zero, and then this will be zero, 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 zero. So whichever way you decide to draw your uh, K map, yeah, it's fine, but this is just the format. So, um, so we already explained what mean time and mass times are. So in other words, this is, the K map representation using the mean term, we can also use the mass term. We're going to see an example, okay, where we use the mass term rather than the mean term, okay? Okay. So, what is the approach for K map minimization? Let's say the algorithm, okay? Because uh, as far as uh, the computer engineer is concerned, you want to play with algorithm. You always want to figure out a systematic approach to solving a problem. So, uh, the algorithm, algorithm for K map minimization. So the first thing we want to do is to write a mean term Boolean expression from the two true table. Okay, write a mean term Boolean expression from the truth table. And then the second thing you want to do, plot a one on the map for each undead group of variables. So here, note that 
the number of ones in the y column of the true table will be equal to the number of ones on the map, okay? So you plot the one on the map for each handed group of variables. So the top point here is to draw loops, okay? Draw loops around adjacent groups of two, even even numbers anyway, of two, four, not just uh, then eight, E, I, G, H, T, ones on the map. So note that the loop may overlap, okay? We're going to see examples may overlap. Then the next point is to eliminate, okay? So we want to eliminate the variable or variables that appear or appears with its or their complements, okay? Within the loop. And then you want to save the variable or variables that is or are left, okay? So after grouping, we eliminate. And then the last point in this, in this algorithm is to logically or the group. the groups that remain to form the simplified the simplified mean term expression okay so that's what it is. So this is the algorithm, whether we are dealing with um, uh, uh, two variable, th uh, two variable or three variable, four variable or five variable came up, okay? So let us consider a little example, few, just a, a few examples, and then uh, we progress. So an example of a uh, two variable came up, two variable came up. So we want to simplify y to be the same as a dot b, then plus a dot b bar. We just, we resolve this using Boolean expression, uh, using Boole Boolean algebra, and from our minimization using Boolean algebra, we got that a is the same, y is the same as a. Okay, so let us try this out now. Okay, so we know we have two variables, so we have something like this, A, A bar, B, B bar, right? So we have A, B. So this is A, B, so that's one, right? Then we have A, B bar, A, B bar, this is another one, right? And now nothing is here, so we present with a zero, with a zero, okay? So this is what we have for the K-map. And then uh, from the second, uh, uh, from the algorithm, afterwards we form loops of either two or four or eight. So we have two here, okay? So we form this loop. Okay, let's remove that. Let's use another color. So let's say we form this loop. Perfect. Now in forming this loop, the next thing is to eliminate variables that appears with their complement, okay? So in this case, we have A, but A does not appear with its complement, but B and B bar appears with its complement. So in other, in other words, we are knocking this off 
this entire expression. So what do we have? What we have left is A. So Y is the same as A. Okay. Yeah. So uh, since uh, B and B bar are present in the vertical loop, they are eliminated such that only the A remains. Okay. And that is it. And we, are, we, we played with that using the uh, Boolean algebra, using the theorems and axioms, and we, we got the same thing. Okay, let us look at another example. So let's assume we have y is the same as a bar dot b plus a bar dot b bar plus a dot b. The same thing we did, you know. So now here, it's a two variable kema because we have just a and b. So here we have a, a bar, b, b bar. So we have a bar b, a bar b is here, that's one. a bar b bar, that's one. Then a b, a b, one. So we now want to form loops. Don't forget, in the algorithm, they could overlap. So this forms a group of two, and this also forms a group of two. So let's change the color. This also forms a group of two, okay? Now, when we consider this group of two, okay, let's consider the yellow. This group of two, A bar is common, but B bar and B and B bar are common too, so we can strike that off. So we have A bar left. So we have A bar. Okay. So now that is Y plus. So let us consider the one in red. So here in this column, we have A and A bar are present. And since the complements are present, so we eliminate them. So all we have left is B because B does not have this complement here, plus B. So that is it. And that is what we also got using the Boolean expression, uh, using the theorems and um, the axioms, okay? So it means that this is consistent with what we achieved earlier. So let us consider the three variables quickly. So we could uh, run out of this class, three variables. So three variable schema. So here we have three inputs. So it, it means that we have two to the power of n, for which two to the power of three is the same as eight number of lines. So we have a, b, c as our inputs. Then we have output y, right? So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Okay. So in other words, we have all zeros here, which is the same as A, B, C, or bar, bar. Okay. And this zero, zero, one, that is A bar, B bar, C. This is zero, one, zero, which is A bar, B, C bar. And this zero, one, one, which is A bar, B, C. Then we have one, zero, zero, which is A, B bar, C bar. Then we have one, zero, one, which is A, B bar, C. And we have one, one, zero, which is A, B, C bar. Then we have one, 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 which is A, B, C. Okay, so uh, the map follows directly. We are going to have uh, eight possible blocks. So that will be one, two, three, four. So we have this. So here we have A, B, A bar, B, A bar, B bar, then A, B bar. So here we have C, C bar. Mm -hmm. So here we can have A, B, C, which is one, one, one. We can have 
a bar bc which is 0 1 1 we have a bar b bar c which is 0 0 1 we have a b bar c which is 1 0 1 then here we have a b c bar which is 1 1 0 here we have a bar b c bar that's 0 1 0 we have a bar b bar c bar which is 0 0 0 and then here we have a b bar c bar which is 0 1 no 1 1 0 0 sorry uh, 1 0 0 so let's assume we have an example and y is the same as a bar b bar c bar plus a bar b c plus a b c plus a b bar c bar okay so we can draw this out quickly one two three four so we have a b a bar b a bar b bar a b bar then c c bar right so a b c a bar b bar c bar that's one a bar b bar c bar then a bar b then c that's one here a b c a b c that's one here a b bar a b bar c bar one here okay so in other words we can form two group of twos okay so that is this and this and then you can say why the output is the same so remember we, we, we will we will eliminate variables that are present with their complements in the combination so here we have a a bar so both of them will be off so this and this will be off so we have b is common and c right so that's bc so we're going to have b c plus in this case a bar a is also now a bar and it's com a a and this complement are present so just this is just b bar so in other words we have to strike the, the complement and the variable so we have b bar so it's c bar b bar c bar so then plus b bar c bar that is what we get as the minimization so let us consider four variables and then look at the five variables and i already made mention of uh, one thing we'll do we are considering the mean time then we'll also look at the max time okay then we could look at Quinn McCloskey before uh, our time is up mm. so for five variable oh four this four variable so let's do four variable we've done three so let's do five let's do let's do four rather four variable came out so we already know that two to the power of n that's to the power of four that is 16 number of lines right number of lines so we have a b c d that's 16 that's one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight one two three four one two three four one two three four two three four we have one two 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 uh, zero one 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 so here we have y to be 
A, B, C, D, O, B, right? B, B, A, B, 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 C, B, D, B. So that's A, B, 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 C, B, D. Then this is A, B, 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 C, D, B. That's this, 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 then this. That is A, B, 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 C, D, right? Then for this, this is A, B, B, C bar, D bar. Then this is A bar, B, C bar, D, right? Then for this is A bar, B, C, D bar. Then this A bar, B, C, D. Then this, this is A, B bar, C bar, D bar. Then this is uh, A, B bar, C bar, D. Then this is A, B bar, C, C, that's C, then D bar. Then this is A, B bar, C, D. Then this is A, B, C bar, D bar. Then this is A, B, C bar, D. Then here we have a, B, C, D, bar. And this is A, B, C, D. So it means we are going to have 16 boxes also. So we want to have a line box here. One, two, three, then that's four, right? So this is one, two, three, four. So we have A, B, A bar, B, then A bar, B bar, then A, B bar. So we have the same here, C, D, C bar, D. Then we have C bar, D bar, then C, D bar. So this is going to give us A, B, C, D, A bar, B, C, D. A bar, B bar, C, D, A, B bar, C, D. Then this is A, B, C bar, D, A bar, B, C bar, D, A bar, B bar, C bar, D, A, A, sorry, that's A, B bar, C bar, D. And this is A, B, C bar, D bar, A bar, B, C bar, D bar. A bar, B bar, C bar, D bar. Then A, B bar, C bar, D bar. Then this is A, B, C, D bar. A bar, B, C, D bar. A bar, B bar, C, D bar. Then A, B bar, C, D bar. That's that. So uh, if we consider... One example, yeah, it's the same as, you know, uh, representing uh, this as, okay, let me put up another representation. So let's say this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, se seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it means that if you look at this, uh, we can equally represent this kind of map in a different format by placing the numbers, okay, in it, and then we spread it out, okay? And there are different versions to it. So we could represent it this way. Then in, in some other tests, you see they start off by A bar, B bar, uh, A bar, B, A, B, and then this and this are switched, and then this. But whichever way we get our answers, okay? Whichever way. Okay. Now, uh, do I have any example here? Yeah, yeah. Now I want to talk about the 
five variables. The five variables. But before I do that, let us look at one simple example using this. So let's assume I, I want to solve this. So I don't want to claim this. Let's say y is the same as uh, a bar b bar c bar d plus a b c bar d plus a b bar c bar d plus a bar b bar c d plus a b bar c d so if we want to do this so it means that let's change the color because i don't want to wipe this so a bar b bar c bar d a bar b bar then c bar d that is we have a one here now a b s a b c bar d we have a one here then a b bar we have a b bar then c bar d we have a one here am i doing the right thing a b bar c bar d so one here a b c bar a b c bar d a b c bar d okay come a b a b c bar d yeah it has that so i think i made a mistake here let's wipe this a b c bar d mm -hmm. then a b a b c d sorry i think i made a nice like i repeated something twice in this my example Then A B A B bar C bar D A B bar A B bar C bar A B bar C bar D um, So we have A bar B bar D, B bar, B bar, A bar, B bar, C bar, D. Perfect. Then we have A, B, C bar, D. Yes. Then A, B bar, A, B bar, C bar, D. A, B bar, A, B bar. C bar D does it here. Then A B A bar B bar mm -hmm. C D does that here. Then A B bar C D then this here. So we have all five. And now we want to do a group of four and a group of two. We have four here. So let's use another color. So we have this as one group. Then they can also overlap this and this. They fold into each other. So we have two groups, okay? So in this group, let's change the color. So in this group, we have A and its complement. So we can strike this off. Then we have C and its complement. So we have B bar and D, right? So Y is the same as B bar D. Then for this plus, we have A, B, A, B bar. So the B and B bar we cross out. So that'll be A, C bar D plus A, C bar D. Okay. So this particular analysis is what we refer to as the canonical 
sum of products. Okay? Now, what if we want to resolve the canonical product of sum? Okay? The product of sum. Then we now have to play with whatever we have. Now, in this case, don't forget we have this to be zero. Let us number this, please. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's change the color for ease of. So let's use blue. So from this, this is zero. A bar. Now, A bar, B bar, C bar, D. A bar, B bar. Hello? Okay, better still, let's, let's just wipe this. Because now I want to solve, this is canonical product of sum. Now I want us to resolve canonical, canonical sum of product rather. So I want us to resolve canonical product of sum before we look at the five uh, variables. So uh, da, 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 let's clean this up. Just let's take this back for it. Rather than wipe everything. Good. So for this now, let us introduce these numbers. So ABC is zero. Now A bar B bar C bar. D, A bar, B bar, A bar, B bar, C bar, D, A bar, B bar, C bar, D, that is one. Then A bar, B bar, C, A bar, B bar, C, B bar, that is two, right? Then we have uh, then three is A bar, B bar, then C, D. This is three. Then we have A, A bar B, A bar B, C bar, D bar. This is all right. Then we have A bar, A bar B, then C bar D, C bar D, that is five, right? Then A bar B, C D bar, C D bar, this is six. Then A bar B, a bar B, C, D, this is seven. I made a mistake here. This is not zero. This A bar B bar C bar D bar this is zero. So we start at seven. Then the eight here is A, B bar, A, B bar, C bar, D bar. So this is eight, A, B bar, C bar, D, this is nine, A, B bar, C, D bar, 10, A, B bar, C, D, 11, then A, B bar, A, B, C bar, D, that's 12, A, B, C bar, D, 13, A, B, C, D bar, 14, then this is 15. So we have 15, 
So let's assume I want to plot something here. I hope, uh, I hope my numbering is correct. So relative to this. So uh, let's assume I want to resolve something, say uh, two, let's say zero. Mm. Then, uh, let's say, Four, five, six, seven. Let's say four, five, six, seven, zero, two, eight. I want to do eight. I want to do ten. I want to do ten. I want to do uh, I want to do twelve. I want to do 14 and I want to do 15, for instance, just using this. So now let's assume I have an example, say uh, the canonical um, product of sum, say A, B, C, D. So it is going to give us a pi of all of these. Mm -hmm. So it means that now, if this is canonical, canonical product of sum, let's assume you have, you know, this is what you want to resolve. So we have done uh, sum of product. So let's check our product of sum this time. So, um, so if we want to map this a zero here, so in in sum of product, we use one. So in product of sum, we use zero, okay? So we have zero, so we use zero here. Then uh, for zero, then two, four, five, six, seven, Okay, I have five minutes to go. Probably this way we'll stop for today. Uh, because I have another class right away. Now, um, we've done seven. Then eight. Yes, eight. Ten. Twelve. Fourteen. And fifteen. Okay, so now we want to group them. So let's let's group them. So let's use green. So we can do a group of four. This one group. This again is another group. This is also another group. And then there's a group of two here, okay? So, and you observe that this group is the same as A plus C plus D, because here, A and A bar are common, right? So we have, in this case, then uh, um, let me wipe this. This D. Let's change the color. Okay. So once we eliminate here, what do we have here? Uh, we're going to eliminate this. So we have B 
CD. Okay. Here, this and this are common. So once we eliminate what is common, B bar, so we have B plus C plus D, right? Then in this case, C bar, D bar goes out. D bar, C bar, D bar also go out here. So we have D and D bar that also goes out. So what do we have? A bar, B, right? Looking at it carefully, okay? Because in this instance, this and this will cross. Uh, they have their complement, so we have D left. Why this and this will also cross. Are you still with me, please? Hello? Yes, we are, sir. Okay. So once we do that, so what do we get in this block? I need someone to tell me. I need someone to tell me, please. A, A bar or B? A bar plus B, yeah? Plus here we eliminate this C bar C, then we have D, then we have something left here. This we eliminate this, then we have D bar, right? Isn't it? Now for this group, what do we have? Now we are going to eliminate A bar, B bar. Those are yeah. Yes, why can't we leave it as A bar or B? No, because because the D or D bar. by the algorithm, by the algorithm, what we are eliminating are those with their complements, right? So we have done that for this, and we have done that for this. So we have those variables left for the canonical product of sum. And in this case, uh, we eliminate this, then we have B bar. Plus, then in this case, that will be plus D bar, right? Because this will truncate this D bar. Then for this group of four, we have uh, A, A bar. So we have B plus, in this case, plus D bar. So hence, what we have is... B bar plus D bar, which is this, plus B bar plus D bar plus B plus C plus D plus A bar plus B plus D plus D bar. That's the canonical product of sum, okay? Now, um, uh, I'm supposed to be in another class right now, but I will just steal some 10 minutes. I just want to conclude this so that I could upload the video right away. So my apologies, okay? So let us clear the entire board. Uh, this class is already up and running. So, but we'll just uh, see what we can do. Okay, so the five variables, okay? I'll just quickly run through the five variable. Five variable came up. My apologies, we just have to stretch our time. So in this case, the came up becomes 3D. When solving logic, problems with more than four variables. So, uh, so we can get going.
Now, uh, the second thing here, because we are dealing with five variables, uh, the uh, suitable technique for five variable or more variables is Quinn McCloskey algorithm or minimization technique, or better see the tabular method. But we could use schema, but it becomes uh, more difficult and more complicated using uh, the Boolean algebra or schema to solve problems beyond four variables. Excuse me, four variables. But let's look at it because now we'll have to resolve things in 3D. Okay. Now, uh, and secondly, uh, the second thing in this algorithm is that uh, it has two four variable k map, k maps stacked to make it three dimensional, okay? And then the top, the top map is the E plane while the bottom map is the uh, E bar plane, okay? Then one more thing is that adjacent groups of two, four, and eight are looped together. Okay, I looked. Okay. So uh, I'll run through one simple example and then we move on to our, uh, um, what's it called now? Um, Queen McCloskey. i run through that quickly and then uh, we're done for the day. So, okay, let us. Um, let's play off. So let's assume we have y to be the same as a, b bar, c bar, d bar, e bar, plus a bar, b bar, c bar, d, e bar, plus a bar, b, c bar, d, e bar, plus a bar, B bar, C, D, E bar. You know, that's... Uh, that is C, D, E bar, plus A bar, B, C, D, E bar, plus A, Bar, B bar, C bar, D, E, then plus A bar, B, C bar, D, E, then let's say plus A bar, B bar, C, D, E, plus A bar, B, C, D, E. So do we have that? So, uh, okay. Now, you can also attempt to solve this using the uh, Boolean uh, algebra, okay? Now, you see that you have a very long line of, um, you know, problem to solve. So, this is our fourth here. One, two, three, four. And this is the fifth here. And then the sixth. Then the seventh. Then the eighth. Then, okay. Eight. Do I have everything we presented? I'm just uh, just a moment, please. I want to be sure we have the same thing running. Okay. Okay, well, whichever way. Now, uh, I already mentioned that we have two for variable map. So, because uh, this is uh, 32, right? We should have 32 boxes. So let us have something like this.
So we have to draw these openings like so. And then draw these, these, and this. So we have A, B, A by B, A by B by A, B. So we have C, D bar, C bar, D bar, C bar, D, then C, D. So this is the E plane, what is on top, right? Then we have this one that is at the bottom. This, this, and this. Then pull this through again. So we have our 32 boxes. So A, B, A bar, B, A bar, B bar, A, B bar, C, D bar, C bar, D bar. C bar, D, C, D, and then we say this is going to be our E bar plane. Okay, so now we want to start A, B bar. Now this is E bar, so it's going. we're going to plot it on the E bar plane, right? So we're going to look out for A, B bar, A, B bar, C bar, D, then E plane. So we have our one here. We have our one here. Okay, now the next is on the E plane, E bar plane too. So this is E bar. So we have A, B, A bar, B bar, A bar, B bar, C bar, D, C bar, D. So it's going to be here. Then, so we are done with this. We are done with this. Then A bar, this also E bar. So it's going to be on the E bar plane. So A bar, B, A bar, B. Then C bar D is C bar D, then E bar. So we are also done with this. So A bar, B bar, it's also E bar. So it's going to be on the E plane. So A bar, B bar, A bar, B bar, C, D. A bar, B bar, C, D, that's this. So we are done with this too. So this is also on the E bar plane. So that's A bar. B, C, D, A bar, A bar, B, C, D. I think I must have plotted something wrongly here. It's A bar. This is A bar B, A bar B. So this is supposed to be here, not here. I'm sorry. Are you still with me? It's like. Yes, sir, we're with you. Okay. So this is A bar, A bar B. It's on this line. A bar B, C. C bar B. Yeah, it's here. So, so this will be. A, B, bar. So this is A bar, B, A bar, B, C, D, yeah. Then this is the E plane. So that would be A bar, B bar, C bar, D, A bar, B bar, C bar, D. Then A bar, B bar, a bar, B bar, C bar, D on the E plane. So A, B, A, B bar, A bar, B bar, C, D, yeah. Then we have A bar, B, C, D. 
Good. So in this case, you can see that we can actually map the group of four here. We can also map the group of four here. This does not have relationship with any, we map it strictly. Now, this group of four are in line with this group of four. So we can form a cylinder with this one, okay? So making it a group of eight rather than a group of four. Now, here, it's isolated. So all we can do is to represent it the way it is. So why? In this case, y would be the same as this. That's a b bar, a b bar, c bar d bar, c bar d bar, then e bar, right? E bar. Now, in this case, you see that c, c bar, c, we cancel each other. Let me use another color. So. C bar, C, we, we, we eliminate each other. So all we have there is D. Now in this case too, C bar, C, we eliminate each other. So all we have left is D, right? So D is common. So we can take one of the Ds now. Now here we have A bar B, A bar B. So B have its complement. So that crosses out. The same thing here, B have its complement that crosses out. So in this case, we now have A bar plus, sorry, plus A bar D because the E bar, the E bar will also cross out. So this is the correct answer. So the four ones on the E bar and E plane I also adjacent so that the entire group is enclosed in the cylinder which we have here. And this gives us this. So uh, well, this is uh, the uh, five variable came up. So I'll just move on straight to the Queen McCloskey algorithm. And I already mentioned that the algorithm, uh, which is uh, the tabular method for the algorithm, we first have to generate the prime implicants and then uh, we construct the uh, prime implicant table. Then afterwards, we reduce the prime implicant table using the match pairs. And then we solve the prime implicants table. So uh, the prime implicant is the same as the group of ones, while the essential prime implicant is the largest number of possible group of ones. So given an example where we have the output Z and uh, some variables, input variables V, W, X, Y, for the uh, sum of product, well, we first write the uh, binary equivalent of the given mean terms. And that's what we have here. And then the second thing is to make a table and arrange all the mean terms according to the number of ones contained in each group. So we have a group here and the main term. So we want to group them. So the first group here is zero, it's, it's all zeros. Then the second group, we have one and eight, they have just a single one. And then the next group is three and nine because they have two ones. And the third group is uh, seven and 11 because they have three ones. And then the Last group is group four, where they have all ones, four ones. So the next thing to do is to make another table having the match pairs. And here we know uh, for us to make groups for match pairs, they must differ by one uh, group. So where we have a group zero, 
being the nth group, then we can only form a match pair with the next group, which is the n plus one group. So in other words, we can make uh, form match pairs with group one and two, with group two and three, and so on. So here we already mentioned that a match pair is a pair of mean terms that differs by one variable. Okay. So that is where we stopped. So I want us to recall the previous table. Recall the previous table where we have the groups, group, and then we have the mean terms, and then we have the binary equivalent where we have the VW, X, Y. We have group zero, where we have zero, one, zero, zero, zero. We have group one, where we have one and eight. We have zero, 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 one, and one, zero, zero, zero. We have our second group, where we have three and nine where we have zero, zero, one, one, and one, zero, zero, one. Then we have our third group, where we have seven and 11. We have zero, one, 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 and one, zero, one, one. Then we have our fourth group, where we have 15 and we have one, 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 one. So what we want to do is to form match pairs. So we are going to form match pair, pairs with the nth group and the n plus one group. So we're going to form match pairs with zero and one. And we know that match pair, a match pair is a pair of mean term that differs by one variable. So we want to check. Now, if they differ by more than one variable, then uh, they cannot form a match pair. So we now want to create another table so let's use blue so we have group we have matched pair pairs and then we have our binary equivalent which is V, W, X, Y. So now for our group zero, here we can form match pair between group zero and one. And if you look at here, we have all zeros and we have zero, 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 one. And then they differ by just one one point here because there's a one here. So here they differ by just one variable. And in other words, we can form a match pair with this because they differ at this point and they are the same at, you know, given the other variables. So all the other variables are the same except for the Y variable, right? So in other words, zero and one, zero and one, the mean term zero and one can form a match pair because they are all the same except in this single variable. So we use a dash to show where they differ. And between this and this, we also can get a match pair because they only differ here by variable V. Every other variable is the same. So zero, and eight also forms a match pair where they differ at this variable V, others are the same. Did you get this point, please? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you got this point, then it means we are, we are as good as done. So the next uh, set of match pair will be group one and group two. And now we are going to check for one and three. 
Yes, they are the same almost everywhere except for variable x. So they form a match pair. So this and this forms a match pair. So one and three forms a match pair. So, and they are the same at zero, zero, dash one. So that's zero, zero, dash one, all right? And now how about one and nine? Yes, they only differ by variable V. So they equally form a match pair, okay? So it means one and nine forms a match pair. And that will be dash zero, zero, one, right? Now, how about eight? Let's check eight and three. Eight and three differ by a, a, a v, v variable and also X variable, so they don't form a match pair because they must differ by only one variable to form a match pair. How about eight and nine? Yes, by just one variable, why? So eight and nine forms a match pair, eight and nine. So that would be one, zero zero dash for this group one so we can cross this in. so two and three also can form a uh, match pair so let us check where they apply so let us look at three so let's change the color so three and seven yes they do because they are the same except uh, in, uh for x variable so three and seven, so we have three, seven. So that's uh, zero, zero, dash one, right? Zero dash one, one, yeah. Zero dash one, one. Then high by three and 11. Yes, the differ here, V. So that'll be dash zero, zero, that's zero one one, right? Three eleven. Three and eleven form match pair, and that is dash zero. Okay. What about eight and three? Eight and three. Eight and three. Eight and three. Eight and three. Okay, yeah. Eight and three, they differ by two variables. Now they differ by this, if you look at it, yes, this V, and also uh, eight and three, they differ here also zero one, and here they also differ zero one. So, and to form match pair, they must differ by only one variable. Okay. okay so I think I just yeah. yeah, so they should differ by only one variable. So should they differ by more than one variable, then they don't form a match pair. Is that okay? So now let us look at, let us look at nine and seven. Yeah, we're going to see the same thing here again. For nine and seven, yeah, for v v is the same, w is different, x is different, and y is same. So they differ by two variables, so they don't form a match pair. Nine and seven. So we now check nine and eleven. For nine and eleven, one zero. So they differ by only the x variable. So they form a match pair. Nine and eleven forms match pair. So nine eleven. So that will give us one zero dash one. So we go to the next. So this group two. So we we'll go to the next. So three and four. So in three and four. We check for seven and 15. So they form a match pair because they differ by V variable. So seven, 15 forms a match pair. Mean time seven and 15. So that would be dash one, 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 right? Dash one, one, one. And then uh, 11 and 15 also, that would be one, 11, and 15, that will be one, 11 and 15. So the differ by the W variable, that's dash one, one. So we've done the first grouping. And now we are going to repeat this, okay? So in group, in step four, 
It's step four. Okay, so I want to wipe this so that I don't have to clean this. So what, what group are we going to write for that last one? Is it three or three? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 group three is group three. Is group three. This is group three. Yeah, it's group three. So we are going to be shrinking it till the possibility of making match pair till it till we get to that point where it's not possible to form match pairs. Then we now have to come up with the prime implicant table. So uh, let us uh, let's wipe this so so we make reference to what we have here already. Let's wipe this so. I'm going to wipe this. Let's wipe this. No, I don't want to wipe that. Because that point is very important. So let's wipe this. So now we are going to talk, we're going to the fourth point, right? So in the fourth point, the fourth point here, we want to repeat step three, repeat step three to derive new match pairs, right? We also know that we already know that match pairs uh, make terms that differ by just one variable, okay? So we form a new group now, group, then matched pairs and then the binary equivalent, right? That's V, W, X, Y. So we start with the first group, zero. So when I look up here, now for zero, one, and one, three, do they form match pair? No, they differ by X and Y variable. Now, 0, 1, 1, 9, do they form match pair? They differ by V, and then they also differ by Y. No, how about 0, 1, 8, 9? 0, 1, 8, 9 differ by just V. So, yeah, they form match pair. So, we have 0, 1, 8, 9. That is the form match pair. 0, 1, 8, 9, right? So, that would be dash, zero, zero, dash, dash, zero, zero, dash. Then we come to the zero, eight, one, three. Do they form match pair? They differ here by V, by X, and by Y, no. So zero, eight, one, nine. They are the same here. They are the same here, but they differ here. So zero, eight, one, nine forms match pair. Zero, eight. One nine zero eight one nine. So that's going to give us uh, zero eight one nine dash zero zero dash dash zero zero dash right. So how about zero eight eight nine? Do they this the differ here and the differ here? No. So we are done with that group. So we'll go to the next group. One and two. So for one and two, we check one, three, three, seven. Do they form match pair? One, three, no, three, seven. How about one, three, three, eleven? One, three, three, eleven. Do they? No. So one, three, nine, eleven. Do they? One, three, nine, eleven. Yes, they differ just by this first bit, uh, by V. So we have one, Three, nine, eleven. So that is dash zero dash one. So we come to one nine. That's one three. Right, one three nine eleven. Right. So we come to one nine three seven. Do they one nine three seven? No. How about one nine three eleven? One nine three eleven. One nine three eleven, yes. One nine three eleven. So that's one nine three eleven 
dash zero dash one. Hi, but one I nine eleven. There's no possibility, right? Hi, but eight nine three seven. No. Eight nine three eleven. No. Eight nine nine eleven. No. So we are done with this group. So we'll come to the second group. So three seven. 711. They differ here, they differ here, so no. 37, 11, 15. Yes, they differ here. So dash dash 11. That's 37, 11, 15. So we have dash dash 11. So that's 37. Yes. So how about 311, 715? 311, 715. Yeah, so they differ by variable W. 3, 11, 715, dash, dash, 1, 1. How about uh, 311, 11, 15? No. Then 9, 11, 7, 15? No. Then 9, 11, 11, 15, no. So I think that is what it is. So now, uh, if you observe, we have uh, duplicate match pairs, okay? 0, 1, 8, 9, 0, 1, 8, 9. So we are going to remove all the duplicates, okay? So I'll wipe this. I'll wipe this. I'll wipe this now, and then... So the next point now, point five, is to remove duplicate match pairs, right? So we have group match pairs. Then we have the binary equivalent v w x y so for group zero we take zero one eight nine as dash zero zero dash group one we have one three nine eleven dash zero dash one and then for group two we have three seven 11, 15, dash, dash, 1, 1, right? That's what we have. Now, if you observe this critically, let's wipe this part. Let's wipe this part. Let's even wipe this this time. And let us wipe this too. Now, if you look at this critically, you will observe that we have the prime implicants here. That is 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. And for 0, 0, that's W bar, X bar, right? So for this, we have, let's, let's change the color. So for this, the prime implicants, we have, W bar, X bar, that's zero, zero for W, X. And here we have W bar, Y. We have W bar, Y, right? And here we have X, Y. Here we have X, Y. So these are the prime implicants. Okay, these are the prime implicants. And recall that we said the prime implicants are the group of ones, right? So uh, the, um, uh, the uh, what's it called now? Um, uh, duality pose, right? Okay, if it's the group of ones, then the duality is that it says that it is a group of zeros. So now, we also want to check, so there's a sixth 
a point to this, okay? We can't just stop here. So we want to check if it is possible to make new match pairs. So if we look at it here, where this is the same here, but they differ here and they differ here. So no new, no match pair there. And if we look at group one and two, they differ here and they differ here. So no further match pairs, okay? So you want to say that the sixth point, the sixth point here is that check if new match pairs can be formed, okay? Now, since, oh, no new match pair is possible, we proceed to the next stage. And what is that? The next stage is to design the prime implicant table, okay? So now, uh, let me write this. So, so that's going to be the final stage, okay? So the final stage is to design the prime implicant table. And for us to do that, I have to I have to wipe this also. Let's just transfer this first. Mm. You know this is uh this is now W bar X bar and this is W bar Y and this is X Y. Those are the prime implicants, right? So I need some space here. Okay. So in this case, so we have the prime implicant. Then we have the mean times, the mean times involved, involved. Then we have the mean times given, right? We have, we're given zero, one, three, seven, eight, nine, eleven, fifteen. 11, 15. So these were, you know, These are the mean times given, right? So just those are the mean times given. So we have the prime implicants W. Okay, let's change the color. We have W bar X bar. Then we have W bar Y. Then we have X, Y. Yeah. So for W bar X, the mean terms involved are 0, 1, 8, 9. 0, 1, 8, 9. For Y bar, for W bar Y, 1, 3, 9, 11. Okay. One, three, nine, eleven. And for XY, we have the mean times involved three, seven, eleven, fifteen. Okay, so we can cross them out here. Zero, one, eight, nine. Then here's one, three, nine, eleven. Here we have three. 7, 11, 15, okay? So now we want to circle the mean term in the column having a single mean term. So let's, let's wipe this. I think we are done with this. So let's wipe this and then...
So now we want to circle. So the next thing we want to do here is to circle the mean term in the column having a single mean term. And if we do that, now look at this column. It's having a single mean term. We circle that. This have two, this have two. This also is having a single. This have a single. This have two, this have two, and this have a single mean term. So after that, consider the prime implicant co corresponding to the uh, circle. So the next thing we do, we want to do here is to consider the prime implicant corresponding to the circle, right? And what's that? This is it. Let's change the color. So the prime implicants corresponding to the circle. So this circle, for instance, the prime implicant is this. And for this, Oh no, oh no, oh no. For this, the prime implicant is this. So hence, Z is the same as W bar X bar plus XY. This is the Quinn McCloskey minimization or tabular method. I think this is a good place to stop so that in our subsequent lecture, we, uh, we will now go into uh, some other things, the likes of computer organization, architecture, and then see how we could wrap up the course. Any question, please? Because I have another lecture right now. Any uh, questions? No, sir. It was very explanatory. Thank okay. you very much, sir. Okay, so we'll try to upload this uh, for your for further review and then hope to see you in our next class. So okay. bye for now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.